Okay, we're reassembling this whole thing here. This was unglued. This was unglued. Now we're going to put this piece back here. And why am I doing this? Well, we're not spending a lot of time doing this, but uh, it's a wonderful reference as to how things were made and how we could cut our replacement pieces for this. So it's not super important that it go back together absolutely flawless but it's kind of important that we uh, put this here might slip a little bit but that's okay give it a little squeeze here and this one here we'll put this here it's just big enough for this there there okay shrinkage and stuff We often see these antique pianos with new, new everything in them. Everybody oohs and ahs over that, it seems. We like to keep them as original as possible. And this one's looking like it's going to be extremely original when it's finished. The soundboard, the bridge, the action, not the pin block. We duplicated with antique wood though, not new wood. All the wood we use is old. If you put a new soundboard in your prized antique piano, you're ruining it. It'll never be the same. It'll never sound the same. The wood that goes into new soundboards nowadays is not properly aged. Sometimes only two years old. A lot of these old piano companies age their wood for at least seven. Two doesn't seem to be enough to have all the stresses and the shrinkage work its way to where it wants to be. So when you put a new board in, it might go flat in a couple of years. When you put the old board back in, recrowned, we have one that we've recrowned 30 years ago, and it's still holding its crown perfectly. It seems to last and last and last. It's very solid, very strong. Everything's tightened up when we do this work. It'll last pretty much the rest of your life and keep its originality. Here's our bridge. Freshly hammered in pins, all about the same height. And over here we have started filing the pins on the top. The paper lets us see which ones are too low. Looks like they're all showing. Oh, that one. Half the pin is showing, so that needs to be ground down a little bit more. And those will be finished off with a nice, fine, high-grit sandpaper, and it will put a very nice shine on top of these pins. And once that's done, we can go back with a tiny, tiny amount of super glue, put it around these pins, and that will solidify, and this bridge will be solid as a rock. Better than a new bridge. This old wood is like stone. It's so hard, so stable, it doesn't move, it doesn't shrink. Once it's repaired like this, it should last for another hundred years. Easy. If properly taken care of. So let's take some time filing these and sanding these flat. Let's keep working my way down this bridge. This is the veneer that goes on here. This is the top of that chickering, a piece of cherry. It came off. We're going to be putting it back on. I just took some paint remover and 
tried to remove the rest of the finish. And uh, I want to point out these cracks here. See these splits that occur. These here, these big ones, they match these down below. You know, the veneer didn't just crack. All these splits in here. They're right in line with all of these. All of this shrunk. Now, this piece is, once we got it off here, it, it is wet now, but it is larger than, than it, this piece shrunk. This is smaller now than it was. Now, this is all wet, but rosewood does not swell up too much when it gets wet. This is rosewood. We're going to put this back on here. What we're going to do, I'm pretty sure, we're going to put a piece of cross banding on here. Of uh, poplar or hard maple. Or a piece of cross veneer, like so. Not this veneer, this is just an example. We have some real antique poplar underlayment that they used before they put the finished veneers on. And the soft underlayment, or the cross banding they called it, held everything together and also enabled them to smoothen it out very smooth before they put the finished veneer on. So that's what we're going to do. And that should stop this movement back and forth, season to season. It's going to split all our finish and everything when we put it back on. So that's what we're going to do. And right now, this is the piece we've been assembling. We put uh, put this one in first, and all these pieces here. One, two, three. Now we got one more, and we're going to glue this little piece on. And this whole piece will be ready to put onto the pin block when we get that assembled. So there we have it. That's it. Oh look. This looks like original, original varnish spillover when they varnished the piano. That's original stuff. We're not going to leave that there. Okay, just finished gluing this piece on. See there's a crack here. This little piece was separate. And there's our original finish. well preserved here we're going to leave that and polish it up a little bit and this is the piece we're putting on now the last piece in this whole pin block area here this huge cover cap plate voids and it will be complete and ready to glue on the rest A nice final sheen on the tops of these pins. Making sure they're all level. Let's see if that one is oh, poked through the paper. It's a little tiny bit lower than everything. Just flatten them out. They're all a good height. Mm-hmm. Paper always grabs these pins and it's very annoying. Doing a good job now. Why do we go through? Why do we go through all this trouble? Well, we are devoted to originality. However, this has worked out really well because you can't get wood this hard anymore. So if it is properly repaired. Like I said in the earlier videos, the, the fractures in this wood are running in this direction, of course, and the pins are scissoring. These pins are pushing this way, and the back ones are pushing the other way. They're scissoring into the wood. It can't move anymore. And up here, it did the same thing, which is unusual. It had the grain running this way. Usually, these cracks follow the pin line and it blows right out the end here. This 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 separates and cracks and splits all up. 
not in this case. So this bridge is going to be hard as a rock. Very stable. With no false beats. Because this is where they come from. Loose bridge pins. And that's what we're doing. Makes you wonder why we heat everything up well. Yes, it does stop the, the glue from gelling quick, too quick. It must remain in liquid while it's put in place. But also, wood gases off when it's hot. When it cools off, it goes the opposite. It sucks the glue into the surface. That's it reasons why we use this glue and it's reversible It's like it was almost uh, meant to be there, I guess.
Looks good. Well, that's another 140 years, huh? There's another thing about this high glue stuff. It washes off with hot water. You know, putting all these clamps on here in these difficult to clamp places. If we can't get the glue right away in between there, we can wash it off after. Unlike other adhesives. Once they're dry, they are difficult to remove. But this stuff here, you can just wash it off. And it looks like we uh, were very successful in putting this last piece of cherry in there. Old cherry. So here we go. Yeah, okay, just go right down. Reminds me of wallpaper paste. Yeah, dump some over here. Don't be shy. There we go. There we go. On the end here, that's where I'm, waiting. I'm trying to hold this up here. There we go. It's essential to move quickly. Slop the glue all over the place. There we go. How about over here in this corner? Huh? Looks like we got it good. Right there, starving. Okay, good. All I'm going to do now is flip this over, like so. Just like that. And then we clamp it. There. Looks good. Yeah, I'll put a block of wood there. I'll go to you. A little bit. Come to me a little bit. Right there. Right there. That's it. I'm at the end of my block. i got to put something down there. Um, I didn't get a piece of paper for these here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I don't want all these papers. There's blue on some of them. This one don't have any. This goes here. This goes here. This one goes there. Good and hot, so we got time. That looks pretty good, huh? Slid a little bit. 
There, that's good. Got it? Yeah. yeah. The sub veneer is from an antique piano also, salvaged off of it. It's piano wood. Tone wood. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're all set. Just gotta wipe up the mess. Here's our next piece with our shim added spacer. This board here. Cut it off here. There. That's how wide our shim has to be. some left over for other repairs. Mm -hmm. 